Hi, I'm Lynn Ulbricht, and I'm the mother of Ross Ulbricht, who's um, the defendant in the Silk Road case. Can you tell us uh, what's currently happening with your son? Uh, yeah, he is in uh, prison in at MDC Brooklyn in New York, and um, the discovery process is beginning, so that um, which we've been looking forward to because this is the time when Ross and his um, legal team can begin to look over the evidence uh, presented by the prosecution and begin to prepare their defense. Now I know there's a lot of accusations against Ross. Um, is there any information to those allegations that uh, the people out there should know about? Well, one thing is that um, he was arraigned, formally arraigned, um, a few weeks ago, and one of the things that um, had been charged at uh, previously was um, something about murder for hire and uh, violent, uh, planned violence. And um, this was not part of the formal arraignment. He was not formally indicted for these things. So that is a change. I, his father and I always knew that wasn't true. Um, we have faith in our son and his integrity, and, um, but um, the fact that he was not formally indicted for these things is significant. Um, they, it is mentioned, as an, as, from what I understand from our attorney, as an uncharged crime uh, that is not required to be proven. So I don't really quite understand what that is and why something wouldn't be required to be proven, but um, from what I understand, um, it is not a part of the formal indictment. Now, what kind of precedent does this case uh, set? You know, I'm not very qualified to talk about the case, to be honest. Um, I don't know anything about the case. I'm not told any details. Um, it seems to me that, um, you know, I don't know of other cases that have focused on the Internet, on encryption, on um, Bitcoin. Uh, it seems to me that it's opening up a lot of um, areas that are new in um, our legal system. I, I, but I'm certainly not qualified to, t to comment on it. Are there any part of the story that should be told that is not being told by the mainstream media? Well, I, I've certainly read way too often uh, without the word alleged by the media that um, Ross did this or Ross did that, and a lot of times they're heinous acts. Um, and I would like to say that Ross is a man of integrity. He is um, a compassionate person. He is uh, someone who would never hurt another human being or an animal. Uh, he, he has very high standards, and um, it's very hard to read things written by people who have no idea who he is and who basically just accept at face value um, what either they've read, either in the charges or in other media outlets. Um, but the person that I read about um, occasionally, too often, in the media is not um, Ross. And, um, it's very disappointing and um, disconcerting. I've seen things taken out of context, distorted, um, misquoted, and um, it's uh, very upsetting to, to see that happen. Is there an example of it that sticks out to you? Yeah, I, have, I can say an example. Um, there was a YouTube video where he was asked by his friend uh, kind of in a joking way, um, hey, um, do you think you could live forever? And Ross said, well, with the technology the way it is, sure, that could be possible, in kind of a light way. And um, two different, um, Rolling Stone and the New York Times both, took that out of context and made it sound like he was some kind of megalomaniac who, who believed he could actually live forever and that he had come up with this. And if you saw the video, you would know that it was like a lighthearted conversation talking about technology. And um, it made him sound um, like something else. And that's just one example of taking a little comment out of context and, and turning it into a more sensationalistic picture that um, distorts the truth. Why do you think this is happening to your son? I, I really can't comment on that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah.
<laughs> do you, um, is there anything else you would like to say to the people out there who are watching this video? Um, well, um, I think this is an important case. Um, now, again, I'm not qualified to discuss the case, or I mean, even to comment on the case. I don't. But from what what I've been told, and from what I can see myself, um, our lawyer said that it's very traditional for the government to um, use high-profile cases to make bad law. And um, I think some things at stake here are, well, the future of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is specifically mentioned in the indictment. Um, it seems to me that internet privacy and um, internet freedom could be addressed in this case. And it's an historical precedent-setting case because um, it's addressing things that um, haven't been addressed in our courts, I don't believe. And um, it's a whole new world of um, evidence of, um, I mean, it's, all, it's, it's a new world to me, too. But, um, you know, the whole um, subject of, um, I don't know, uh, Tor and encryption and, you know, internet commerce and all of that. Um, it seems like there's a lot of that that is um, new in our in in the courts. Can you tell us about the Legal Defense Fund and how and why people should get involved and help? Yeah. Here is a scannable QR code that takes you to our website. It will take you to a landing page. It'll take you to the website and also ways to donate. We, contrary to popular opinion, another misconception is that Ross's rich. Ross has nothing. He's completely dependent on um, his parents to put money in his commissary. He has nothing. Um, we are not rich people. And um, we, wanted, we want a fair trial for him. We want the best defense for him and the best um, forensics to analyze this very complex and difficult data. And so, and because this case um, will be precedent setting and will affect us all, um, we're asking for help, and it doesn't have to be a lot. Um, if a lot of people gave a little, it would make the difference. So we're just, I'm just here trying to raise awareness and um, raise funds for his defense. Ross does not belong in prison. He has a lot to give, he has a lot to contribute, and I, and I look forward to the day that he'll be free. And I look at all this, and, and I'm saying, I'm going to prison for arithmetic. I added one to a fucking number on a public web server. In 2011, so to tell people to buy at 500 is difficult. However, Bitcoin is incredibly catching on right now. And if it catches on, if it becomes a real currency, which it's appearing like it's going to do, uh, it will go into the thousands, tens of thousands, 